Hi ya! It's Shelly again, and this is Comfortably Blind. Anyway, so today we're this is the um, yeah the Memorial Day weekend, and it's Monday, and it's the best day so far. And the rest has just been dreck when we're driving. So yeah, let me put my seatbelt back on. want to get busted for that but I thought I'd take while we're we're gonna go down and do the Alpine Loop and while we're going I thought I would um, show off a bit and see what I picked up over the last couple of days um, hey last Friday last Friday the wife and I say hi say hi honey we uh, we hit this we, we, we hit a couple of uh, thrift stores Savers is open, but um, the DI isn't, but there's this little um, kind of almost hole-in-the-wall uh, thrift store that I actually picked up a couple of couple of things. Um, and one of them, I actually went in looking for this. It is a, a rainbow, a Kodak rainbow. Let's see if we can even see it. See if you can even see it. It's a, a Rainbow 2A Model B. And this one is from 1930. I cleaned it up a little bit, but it looks like it looks like somebody has already replaced the bellows. So, but it kind of looks like a train. It's really cool. You have this one you have um, have your your shutter speeds up here yeah let's get my finger up there you have your shutter speeds up here you have time which will hold it open like if you you click it click it it will hold it open then you click it again and it will close it and then you have then you have a bulb bulb will hold the lens open as long as you hold the, the uh, lens release down and then you have 25 and 50 now you got to kind of remember these old things um, your ISO was 50 maybe a hundred but not much more than that and then you have your shutter your aperture here you can kind of see how the aperture opens and closes but it seems the shutter works really really well on it and it's also to open it and close it you open it like this and this is how you load it so you slide that over, you lift up on the, the cartridge, the cartridge comes out, and then your film goes inside. And if you've watched some of my old videos, you remember those little blue discs? Um, that takes up the space. You can run 120 in this, even though it's a 116 camera, so it's much wider. But that, like that, um, what was it, Agfa Ansco was a, one, was a 116? And I had to have those made to run the run the 120 film. Yeah. So so I went and shot it yesterday, and I couldn't actually get I couldn't actually get a uh, the the I couldn't get that those discs and the 120 spool to work on work on the take up side. So I just ended up running. I've got a couple of 116 um, spools, and I actually shot a roll through this yesterday. And um, I don't know how it they'll come out. Um, for some odd reason, while I was shooting it, the little the little lock slid, and I picked the camera up, and it kind of opened a little bit. We'll see. Um, I have another roll of 100 speed that I might get a, a wild hair, um, but I got a couple other cameras that I'm going to show you that I'll probably be shooting today. So then you slide that back in, you lock it. Once you got it all. And then your take up, take ups here, and it's one of those one-way things. So you pull it out to release the release the spool, line it up. You pull it through. You got your little red window here. Um, now on this one, this is one of those ones you have to count 15, 15 marks because it's a really wide, really wide uh, negative really wide picture I think it's six by nine I think so yeah you don't get as much uh, uh, as, as many 
photos off a roll of film. So you've got to kind of you got to count 15 spaces here. And I think I got maybe six six on a 12 12 exposure roll of 120. But still way cool. <laughs> and then you have your here you have your focus. You can go from uh, eight feet or fixed or a hundred feet all the way at the end. And if you when you go to close it, you have to push this in. Unlike my vigilant, where you just close it and everything folds in, you have to push this back in before you close the door. The way you do that is you got this little lever here which will lift that up out of its groove and then you can push then you push the bellows in till it's flush and now you push back because it's on the eccentrics you push back on the on the struts you close it and you lock it this also doubles this also doubles as so if you want to set it down that way you can set it for portrait and if you flip it up, either way, like if you put it there, then you can take landscape. I think it works the other way too. It is right in the center. So there you go. And I pay. I think I might have paid a little more than more for this than I should have. But it's the red or the old rose rainbow. And it even still has a little hand strap. I couldn't. I checked it with light. I couldn't get it to to show any light through the bellows so I don't see any reason why it shouldn't take a good picture um, the, the guy had another the 2a B model B but not rainbow that I might go and get um, next payday maybe we'll see also I found this on Facebook marketplace what it is is it's a Kodak Duo Flex, and it even comes with its little cover, which is kind of cheesy. But what the hell? Um, it's they call it a uh, they call it a um, faux flex or a you know, kind of a fake uh, uh, dual flex or whatever. Um, the the lens in in uh, old Kodak style, and this is from '50. No, it could be as early as 47. Um, it's just a meniscus lens, and then you have your then you have your viewfinder, waist level viewfinder. Hi, can you see my fingers? Yeah. Um, and then so you so you shoot it by looking down. You put it and you look down, and there's no focus. There's no fo corresponding focus on this. It's kind of like a uh, um, a Hawkeye, where you just you get what you get. And then you you either have bulb, either have bulb or regular. So every time you push this button in bulb mode, it holds the holds the lens open until you let go. And then on eye, it just flashes. You you get you you get the aperture you get. And you get the shutter speed you get. Um, it does have this does have a tripod mount. Um, it's the viewfinder's fairly clean I'm kind of almost afraid to take it apart you also have your two pins for your flash which I don't have I don't know if I'm gonna worry about getting it getting getting a flash for it I'll, I'm gonna run a roll through it I've already got roll in it I'm gonna run a roll through it today we'll see what happens but this I, I paid 20 for this I paid I'm not gonna tell you how much I paid for this but yeah, so we're gonna shoot this today. And I'm thinking, here, let me put this back together while we're on the subject. Snap. It's just like plastic is the is a cover, kind of a rubberish plastic. But anyway, so also what I wanna try and shoot is the other day the wife and I were at Savers and I come come across this, and I de I debated on whether I should get it because of what it is. It's yeah, it's kind of the uh, it's kind of the Holga of 35 millimeter cameras. Um, 
um, really pretty, uh, really pretty lame. We'll go with that. I think I paid four dollars for it. I don't have film in it yet, but it just takes a roll of 35. And but I figured out what the hell. If I can shoot, if I can shoot 120 through a Holga, I can shoot a roll of, of 35 through this. And I had, I had, I picked up five rolls of um, Fuji 200 speed 35 millimeter film with this camera. This um, what was it? Anyway, a Pentax uh, IQ Zoom that I paid 75 cents for. And it had one, it's got a roll in, in that camera, and then it had five extra rolls. Have no idea, they were all out of the box. Have no idea if they were stored right. Have no idea how old they were. But we're gonna load it up because how bad can bad get really? Also, um, okay, so on this clean one owner, you have, you have. Um, there's no really no focus. You have shutter size or aperture size. Sorry, you have like four aperture size, and you have corresponding like uh, cloudy, partly cloudy, um, partly sunny, sunny. Right, right. Maybe a, maybe that one. Anyway, and then you have the corresponding numbers over here about what your your uh, aperture would be, and. Let's see if we can, I gotta get this open so we can see. <laughs> there, it's really funny, the aperture. Let's see if you can see, we can see down inside there. There is, you can't catch the light right. Honey, make a left. <laughs> but you, when you rotate this, all it does is, is slide a, it's kind of like a forked groove. And as you slide it this way, it covers more of the lens. As you slide it this way, it opens it. Which I just thought was, can you get any more hokey? You know, but what do you expect? Um, I guess I guess at least it's not one of those those Time magazine cameras. And last night when I was going to work on my um, my dark room, oh, bed there. Um, as I was going to work on my dark room, I had to go out to, to my van to get a pair of um, uh, conduit cutters or, or you know PVC cutters, and I stumbled across this that I had already had. It's a little different, but they're still the same MX35, and they're the Photoflex 35. They're just a little different. You can kind of see where the uh, viewfinders moved a little. Um, this one, this one has a little bit kind of more writing on it, but still, I don't even know if this actually. I haven't actually looked into this. I paid a whole five dollars for this one, four dollars for the other one. Oh, <laughs> yeah. At least on this newer one. At least on the newer one. Um, you have actual apertures. This does not look like it does anything. Um, let's see. Let's see if we can. Okay, let's go slide the other way. Wow, I don't know. Maybe. Oh, yep. They just put, instead of putting it out, instead of putting it behind, and you probably can't see. Instead of putting it back here, they put that slide up here in the front. So, yeah, these are these are quality here, and it's kind of funny. This one, the back side of each one. I don't know. This is a this is re or yeah resets the uh, uh, the counter, and it's really kind of funky. It's just you know this one apparently um, resets it automatically. This one apparently resets it automatically. This one has the button on the bottom, the button on the bottom to rewind your film. This one you actually have to pull this out to rewind your film. The rewind on neither one, the rewind button opens opens the back like it would on my Canons or anything like that. 
Um, what else? Oh, yeah, the, the socket. The socket. Should we go buy a motorhome, motor honey? Um, the socket, they both open with this little tab here. But the socket's moved. Um, oh, oh, this one's made in Taiwan. Where this one's made in Thailand. Ooh, there we go. That's the reason. But I'll probably shoot some of that film that I got for 75 cents with the camera. And the nice thing about that camera for 75 cents, not only did I get five, uh, five unused roll of film, but the previous owner thought so, so highly of me to write their social security number on it. So for 75 cents, I got a camera that works, five extra rolls of film, and an alternate identity. Anyway, I think that's all I've got to really laugh about. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to shoot this. I'm definitely going to shoot this. I haven't got any film as you've seen. Definitely going to shoot this today. Like I say, we're going up the Alpine Loop, which is, it starts out on the American Fork Canyon side and goes up over the top down into the Sundance side. Um, yes, Robert Redford owns a, owns a ski resort up here, and he called it Sundance. Go figure. Anyway, you have a great Memorial Day, as always. And we'll talk to you later.